Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And welcome to First Methodist Church of Maybank. If you're a first time guest, we'd love for you to fill out the yellow card that you'll find in front of your pew. And if you have a prayer request, please fill out the blue card and place it in the offering plate or give it to an usher. We have a few announcements this morning. A church council meeting has been scheduled for Sunday, August 11th, after the worship service in the fellowship hall. The Lord's Acre display will be up on August 11th, and committee sign-up sheets will be ready. Please be in prayer for where you would like to help this year. Women's Bible study is canceled until further notice. Now please review your bulletin for information about events, meetings, and programs, and stop by the table in the narthex for additional information, including sign-up sheets. And now let's worship together. Today's scripture is John 6, verses 24 through 35. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, and neither were his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which per perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then they said that unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign shewest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let's pray together. Dear Lord, our Savior and Redeemer, we come to you with hearts filled with gratitude for the abundant blessings you give us each day. We acknowledge that cheerful giving is not an obligation, but a joyful act of worship. Help us understand that our giving is an expression of our deep love for you and our want to further your kingdom here on earth. In your name we pray, amen. Now please join me in professing our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God.
kiddos. Go to the back of the church. <laughs> How y'all doing? Hi. Y'all ready for school to start? Did you hear what she said? She said she's ready to find out who her teacher is to find out if she's a witch or not. You know, sometimes you just can't follow anything up right. So what grade are you going to be in? Third grade. Sixth. Kindergarten. Second. Oh, you're getting... Seven. Oh, big high, high schooler going on there. Sixth. Wow. So I was talking to your mother. No. I was talking to your mother. Did you know the first time you and I met, you were two years old? And look at you now. You're what, eight? Wow. Y'all have grown so much and got so big. You're the young, you were the youngest in the whole second grade. You know what that means? You're going to be the youngest in the third grade, too. <laughs> hey, I got a question for y'all. Y'all ready for the infamous question because we haven't done it in a few weeks? You ready? Okay, listen. If you pay attention to the question, it should be really easy to get the answer. Okay? Why is Swiss considered the most religious type of cheese? Swiss? Swiss cheese? Yeah, Swiss cheese. Why is Swiss cheese considered the most religious type of cheese because it's holy <laughs> you did it man y'all are good so as, as smart as y'all are y'all will be teaching the teachers this year right <laughs> yeah you're going to teach your entire school that's kind of scary. So, okay. All right. Okay, so. The school year's fixing to start. You got new clothes. You got new school supplies. You got new teachers. You got, some of you've got new schools that you're going to. Um, it's a new year. You're going to have new friends. You'll have some old friends, but you'll make new friends too. So what are your plans to make a difference at your school this year? Um, I'm going to be really nice to the kids that like, weren't so nice to me last year. And I try to build a friendship with them maybe. Cool. That's a great idea. You know, and, and you're making a great point. Jesus tells us that we're supposed to love everybody, even our enemies. Those people that you really don't want anything to do with. But 
if you love them and show kindness to them, it makes them want to change to be more like you. Because what you're proving to them is, is that you're stronger than anything they can do. Look, when I was in school, I was one of the smallest kids in my class. When I was in high school, I was pretty close to the, the smallest. I could fit in a locker. You know, you know how I know I could fit in a locker? Because I was put in a locker. And, and back when I was in school, bullying was, was going on more so than it is today because there's, more, there's a more con conscious focus on not bullying. Back then, bullying was, was the thing to do. So you know how I overcame that? Because I wasn't liked. I, had, I didn't have any friends until my sophomore year in high school. I didn't have birthday parties. So the way that I overcame it was I took what they did and what they said. And I bettered myself because of that. And to this day... I can almost guarantee you that I'm much happier than they are or will ever be. And when I see them, I don't hold a grudge against them for what they did. But like she said, I try to be as friendly as possible because it lets them see God in me. And that's our goal, to change the world, is to let people see God in us so that they'll want to be like us, okay? So that's what we're going to strive for this year, right? All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, Dear Lord thank, you for today. thank you for today. Help me, Help me. to be more Christ-like Christ in, in school this year. Amen. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your seats.
God has blessed you this week, say amen. amen. If he hadn't, say oh me. Roger and Sherry Fisher stand up. Herman, stand up. I wish Elizabeth was here. Angie, stand up. I wish your husband was here. <laughs> okay. We're going to go from least to most. Angie and I on Friday night, or Friday, celebrated our 44th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Herman and Elizabeth, on what day? Yesterday, celebrated 50 years together. Today, correct? The Fishers celebrate 51 years. I'll pray for you, Roger. Congratulations to all of you. And now you know why Lance will be here when he's 150 years old playing the organ. <laughs> Tell me where you saw Jesus this week. Doctor's office. Mountains. Where? On the cross. Out of the mouths of babes. <laughs> Sunset. Somebody say rain? Where did it rain at? It rained at your house. You got a sprinkler head missing or something? <laughs> at the lake, rain. Rained in gun barrel? Did it rain in Maybank? Yes. Well, let me tell you, it did not rain in Celeste. We're afraid that blue is going to disappear in a crack. Where else? At the airport. Birth of a great grandson. Your mama's here. Where is she? I don't see her. Oh, there's Miss Dean. Linda, it's good to see you because I know you are in some pain with your back because I saw when you stood up a while ago, and, and uh, we're going to pray for you. Anybody else? You already told me. Where? Joetta Frazier. Watching the movie The Firing Squad. Where do we need to see God this coming week? Amen. Yes, we do. We've got several. Fo oh, by the way, Bill, it's good to see you back, brother. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and Holy Father, you continue to Take our breath away. Whether it is in a sunrise, whether it's in newborn great-grandchildren, whether it's through healing or comfort, 
or as one of our youngsters said, when we see you, when we look at a cross. Father, you amaze us with your activity in our lives. And when we need you the most, we know that you're there with us. Father, help us to remember that even in those good times on the mountaintop experiences, you're there with us. Father, we lift up all of those who are in need of prayer today. Those who are sick. Those who are grieving. Those who are searching for you. Father, we lift them up. And if there's any way that we can be a part of bringing your blessings on your children. Father, open our hearts that we might receive your instructions. Father, as your church, we continue to try to do all that we can to bring the good news to the world. Father, we ask that you continue to lead and guide us. Father, be with those who are out of town. Keep them safe. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen. I love to think I love about, to think about a, a paradise beyond somewhere beyond the blue. A mansion waiting, a mansion waiting in, the in the distant skies. skies. Maybe next door, Maybe next door to, to you. We'll go parading we'll go through, through the, the distant stars, stars right down the Milky, right down the Milky, Milky Way. way. The plan is to return and Neptune and Mars Mars won't even be halfway. Moving, 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 moving up to Glory Land. Oh yes, I'm moving, 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 moving holding to his nail scarred hands. Don't know when I'm leaving, but I'm ready to go. When I get to heaven, I'll be welcome, I know. Don't you know I'm moving, 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 moving up to glory land. I made my reservation long ago, the day I gave up sin. And when my mansion's ready, this I know I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move right, right in. I have a vision, have a vision of, a of a happy place, place where friends and loved, where friends and loved ones meet. Right on the corner, right on the corner of, of God's, God's Avenue, Avenue and Hallelujah, and Hallelujah Street. Moving, 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 moving up to Glory Land. Oh yes, I'm moving, 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 moving. Holding to his nail-scarred hands. Don't know when I'm leaving, but I'm ready to go. When I get to heaven, I'll be welcome, I know. Don't you know I'm moving, 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 moving up to glory land. Moving, 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 moving up to glory land. Oh, yes, I'm moving, moving, moving. Nail scarred hands. Don't know when I'm leaving, but I'm ready to go. When I get to heaven, I'll be welcome, I know. Don't you know I'm moving, 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 moving up to glory land. Moving up to glory
Judy, every time y'all do that song, I just catch myself watching you <laughs> hit that high note and just like it's nothing. And then I look over and there's Kenneth going. <laughs> <laughs> Will you please stand and join me as we read from the Word of God? We'll be reading from John chapter 8. Beginning with verse 1, then, then they all went home, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to ride on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Holy Father, open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, and our ears that as you speak to us today, we will receive those words and put them into action in our lives. May the words from my mouth be a blessing unto you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. found this interesting statement on sin. I want to share it with you. Sin will take you farther than you planned to go, keep you longer than you planned to stay, cost you more than you planned to pay. Our scripture text today has a few things that are in there that, that, I mean, you could do do a dissertation on any particular thing within this text. So our scripture talks about how Jesus had gone to the Mount of Olives. Typically, that would mean that he had gone to rest. It says that he came back into town the next morning and went to the temple. And as he got there, people began to gather uh, in order to hear that day's lesson. Now, in the Jewish tradition, the men and the boys would go to the temple, and a rabbi would teach on a particular passage that day. And you knew that He was the rabbi because when a rabbi sat down, that meant meant he was going to begin teaching. So I want you to imagine being at that place at that time, in that crowd. So there you are, temple steps. Jesus sits down to start teaching on Probably, don't know, but I'm just guesstimating, a passage out of Isaiah. And as he's going along and teaching, there's this great commotion coming down the street. And here come the Pharisees and the priests and the scribes, and they're dragging this woman along. And they come right in the middle. 
So if this was the temple courts, they would have drug her right there. And they make their accusation that she had been caught in adultery. And the law of Moses stated that she must be stoned for her sin. And then they question. What do you say? And then a very wild thing happens. Jesus gets up. And I figure he came to right about here. And he bent down and he started writing in the sand. You ever wondered what he might have been writing? He could have been writing the actual law in the sand. He could have, I don't know, been writing a recipe. He could have been writing down the names of all the Pharisees. He could have been writing the Ten Commandments. I mean, have you ever thought about what he could have been writing there? I spent a lot of time thinking about this particular part of the text. And we will never know until we see Jesus face to face and as a 10-year-old child told me one time, at that point, it won't matter and we won't care because we'll be too busy praising God. Amen. But curiosity, you know what I think he was writing? I think he was writing the sins of all those Pharisees that were standing in front of him. I think he was writing down the things that they had done in sin to show them that sin is sin is sin is sin. God doesn't rank sin on a one to ten scale like David Letterman used to do on his show. You see, God doesn't do that. So personally, I think he was writing their faults, their sins, their screw-ups to prove to them they were no better than she was. And his scripture says that he stood up and he looked him in the eye and he said, any of you who has no sin in your life, throw the first stone. He didn't go and sit back down. He stooped back down and started writing some more. And the scripture says that one by one, starting from the oldest to the youngest, walked away. After a few minutes, he asked the woman, where's your condemners? And her response was, there's no one here to condemn my favorite part of the scripture then I don't condemn you either 
You see, God has always given us a way to turn from sin in our lives. My mama always taught in a way that she knew I could understand. She always talked about the straight and narrow road and then she talked about the rosy road like we talked about last week. And every time I would mess up, Mama would tell me that I took the wrong road. But Mama never told me that I needed to turn around and go back. She told me that up the way a little bit, there'll be an exit. And to take that exit to get back on the road I need to be on. God loves us so much that he is going to give us every ample opportunity to be in a healthy, right relationship with him. A lot of people take this part of Scripture and twist and turn it. Their thing is, see, Jesus didn't condemn her, so it's okay. He overlooked her sin. He let her know that she was loved and everything was okay. Now, I don't know how you interpret Scripture, but this is the way I interpret it. No, He didn't give her a free pass. He didn't pat her on the back and say, go ahead, you're going to be okay, just live your life. The part that always gets left out is those last couple of words. Go and sin no more. It wasn't a free pass. It was letting her know that God's grace and forgiveness was there for her taking. That God's love and forgiveness was there to give her a new start. It wasn't a free pass to continue doing what they were doing or what she was doing. Because Jesus said, go and sin no more. And that's not the first time that that had been spoken to someone. Not in so many words. But Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well, when He called out her sin, and she said, I need to change my life. And He said, yeah, yeah you do. Too many times people take on the title of being a Christian so that they can justify what they do. And then turn around and condemn somebody else. Too many times the Pharisees in this world have this thing about condemning you for what you do but yet praise what they're doing, which is exactly the same thing you're doing. Our call to being Christians is to start a new life. Being a Christian means turning away from the sin in our lives because you see, sin destroys 
just in that little saying that I said at the beginning. Sin costs more than what we think. Yeah, it's all fun and games. Till the end of time comes. Another lesson that we can learn from this is that before we start, I don't know, critiquing other people's lives, maybe we need to check our lives first to see if we are justified to cast a stone. I don't know how your life's going, but the first stone I cast needs to be at myself. Guess what I'm trying to say with our text today is this. We need to quit using the name Christian to justify our wrongs in order to truly have a relationship with God, we need to change our lives and sin no more. Yeah, we're going to screw up. We're going to sin. But learning from that and moving away from that and working towards perfection in our lives. That's what we need. So brothers and sisters, as you come today to take communion, I want you to think about this. If you were at that temple that day, and Jesus bent over to write something in the sand, and your name popped up, what sin would you need to walk away from and sin no more? Let's pray. Gracious Father, there are so many times when we are like those Pharisees that focus on someone else's sin when we try to be the condemner without looking at ourselves Lord, help us to examine ourselves and realize that we have no place in that crowd. Help us to realize that there is no stone that we should pick up. Father, help us to realize how sinful our lives are. And as Jesus told the woman, go and sin no more. Help us to move towards perfection in our lives and realize that we are a forgiven people and that we don't need to mess it up. Help us to fight the sin that enters into our lives in whatever temptation comes along. Father, we pray all this in your Son's name. Amen. This table that you see before you is not First Methodist Church of Maybank's table. It's not the Global Methodist Church's table. This is Christ's table.
And because it's Christ's table, Christ gives the invitation. And Christ invites to his table all who truly love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins, and all who dwell in charity with their neighbors. And all who intend to live a holy life. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. Making your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. Have mercy on us and forgive us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In His great mercy, our Heavenly Father has promised forgiveness of sins to all who repent and with true faith turn to Him. May He have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ always be with you. As a forgiven and reconciled people, let us greet one another in, with signs of peace. Turn to somebody next to you and tell them Jesus loves you and so do I. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our joy to give thanks to you in all places at all times, Almighty Father. You made us in, the image, in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When in our sinfulness we turned away from you and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God, and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you with all the company of heaven, forever singing this hymn to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All praise and glory is yours, O God, our Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to the world. Your Spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort those who mourn, to proclaim freedom to the captive, and liberty to the oppressed. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, and, he, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it do, it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, receiving these gifts of bread and wine with thanksgiving for the death and resurrection of your Son. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit, to be for us 
the body and blood of Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and partake of his most blessed body and blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one as your church, that Christ may dwell in us and we in him. We ask this through your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit in your holy church be all honor and glory now and forever. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I ask my stewards if they'll come forward at this time. I invite you to come to Christ's table. Spend as long as you need in His presence that you and Him can get reacquainted. Come.
closing hymn this morning is Like a Child. This is our hymn of invitation. Anyone that would like to become a part of this church family by transferring your letter from another church, or if you would like to profess your faith in Christ today by receiving him in your heart, you're invited to come as we stand and sing. Receive this benediction as you leave this place. Leave with joy in your heart, smile on your face, and a song on your lips. So that as you enter into this world from this building today, God will be able to give you the words and the actions to tell somebody about Jesus. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will place somebody in your path this week. I guarantee it. Don't mess it up. Share Jesus with everybody. Amen.